anyway, moving on, the movies of the last couple of months. We've had a big, uh, we've had a big year for movies. I have listed them have all we? right here. Not for good movies, though. So. I said movies. <laughs> The, the 2013, I mean, I personally feel 2013 has not been up to scratch compared to 2012. Oh, I thought 2012 was bad as well, though. They've just, all, the past couple of years have been kind of bad. Well, but, but I mean, you know, Avengers, Dark, Dark Knight, yeah. and Looper, and Cabin in the Woods well, are some of my favorite you ones. You included of last Dark year. Knight, so. I, 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 it wasn't horrible. It was okay. certainly better than a lot of other things. But anyway, let's go through the movies and right, let's, let's just st- get Man of Steel out of the way very quickly because we're running short on mm-hmm. time. Man of Steel, my personal two cents. I really dug the Krypton stuff at the beginning with Russell Crowe. I thought it worked really well. I'd be interested to see where where that went. Um, I didn't have too many problems with Zod and everybody else. Um, I really had issues with a couple of things. The final fifteen minutes, in particular, um, you know, my person. And if you, again, if you haven't seen this, I don't know what planet you're living on Krypton, because it's a huge because it was destroyed. <laughs> yeah, it's a huge movie. But spoiler alert. Um, Superman snaps Zod's neck, uh, which you know, for a new su- for Superman to appear and the first thing he does, you know, one is kill you know kill Zod, but two, a lot of other people died collateral damage. He didn't show any thought to pull pull battles away from condensed areas, um, and then this whole Lois Lane, the army, um, you know, the guy who runs KFC, the people at the Quickie Mart in the corner, everybody knows who, who Superman is, right? And that to me also really kind of stinks and smacks of lazy writing so i didn't enjoy man of steel as much as i would like there were some good things in there but i felt let down by a lot of the other stuff um my review would be too long so i just want to say that i liked the woman that played raiden <laughs> sorry Zod's odd sidekick she looked yeah. just like no raiden. no yeah. I, yeah yeah i uh um, i liked her i mean i think we've talked about this a lot yeah. on oh, the yeah. side um I think my biggest issue wasn't really like I, all the mythology stuff I was okay with. It was really just pacing. Like we get the Krypton stuff in the beginning, which was excellent. And then Superman gets told his origin story again. Like the fact that his father comes back as like a super AI, it just make, means it doesn't count that he actually died. I thought Jonathan Kent was completely underused and what he was used for, bitter. like the He's lessons he taught him was man. like, sometimes you need to make a decision <laughs> To uh, protect yourself and put yourself first. Let him die. So why don't Clark, you go just destroy Metropolis? At least he didn't um, say life is like a box of chocolates. Well, <laughs> yeah. And then the other thing I thought like is Lois was really useless. Just I mean, useless in that movie where I wish like so if the whole thing would have started like that first fifteen minutes of Krypton and then you jump to the part where Lois finds Clark fi- discovering the ship and she has that encounter and then she has to go back. And go backwards and tell his story and discover it because she's a Pulitzer Prize winning reporter. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah, yeah. She, she likes to tell you that. Yeah. Um, wouldn't you? Honestly, been, wouldn't you though? <laughs> well, yes. Yeah. I would wear a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, but I just think like you could have had her tell that story, which pays into her character. Then you understand why she knows who Clark is, and then you you don't have to have that weird Superman clark lois love triangle and you could get away with that i think i think that's fine i just thought they retold stuff so many times you see clark live his life and then you see that flashback of like lois trying to discover it right why not just have her discover it combine the two yeah combine like have her have it almost be from her perspective it's the citizen kane of uh, right and then and then they get together at the end and then just the ending is really really just punchy right where i wish there was no tension because Superman should have been trying to contain that while Zod was just like, well, I don't care if I just knock buildings over and kill everyone. And yeah. Superman should have had that moment where he's Superman didn't trying seem to, to stop care. things. And the only one he does try to stop is the, that one, one weird group in the train station right. and it's like yeah. that no one cares about. Like, why wasn't he saving Perry White? Because at least you have him, like, caring about... But he doesn't even know Perry White at that, that I'm point just saying, why introduce, like, I, four I, new I, random yeah, characters for him to is, save when he could have been saving yeah. people? Like, it just yeah. felt like convoluted just convoluted and i wish well, they and it's had, a hard they had to make that two and a half hour runtime you got to stay within that two and a half hour runtime yes. all right moving on um star trek into darkness are we scoring these are we gonna you like rank? Score i don't know what are we doing all right here? give me give me give me a letter grade i would say a solid c plus because everything was like I, all the pieces were good but i just wanted them to fit together better uh, and i also think zach Snyder shouldn't be a director he should be a visual designer like a production yeah. right, designer so, uh, John, uh, uh, sorry, letter grade Q. 
Okay. Um, I'm going to go check minus. Nice. So there you go. Uh, Can I change mine to umlaut? Is that possible? <laughs> Can I give it one dinosaur out of five then? Like, I, what are we doing here? Uh, all right, Star Trek Into Darkness, J.J. Abrahams' uh, Valiant remake of The Wrath of Khan. Yeah, and I'm sorry, that's uh, that's all I've got to say. The Wrath of Khan remade. I mean, Cumberbatch, love that guy. Uh, Quinto, I think they're great. You know, great. They have a great cast. Uh, but yeah, I I enjoyed that movie more the first time around. I thought Thank that. You. Wait, it was a Star Trek movie. I thought it was the Star Wars prequels because I thought it was the best Star Wars. <laughs> the Star last Wars fifteen we minutes saw. treated it like it yeah. was. Wait, sure. Well, that, perhaps that was his audition tape for, uh, the, for Disney. It was another yeah. thing. Like I thought pieces were good. Like yeah. and then you just don't fit together the right way. Right. Like no, it's, it's just a weird. I uh, my big my biggest qualm with the entire film is the climax. Uh, I'll do the spoiler alert. Kirk dies, uh, and they've got to get Khan back to because they need his blood, which is bogus because you have seventy two other people in sleep chambers with that blood. But they don't want to revive them in case they go on a rampage. I, guess. I don't know. Well, but they pull one out to put Kirk in one of the chambers. I, the bit I liked was the after credits thing where it was all just Kirk did die, but the entire thing was purgatory. Oh. Did you miss that? It's good. No, I totally missed that. It, it was all it was all the dog's dream. Yeah. yeah Letter grades. Letter grades. When's Hugo rolling then? On the <laughs> island. Um we'll go solid C. C? Uh, really? It's a honestly I hate to say this. I was so disappointed by it. I, I D D minus. I was not a huge Star Trek fan growing up. And, uh, so yeah, I just and, kinda rolled with it. And I try to let them be I really honestly allow these movies to be their own thing. Mm-hmm. I don't let them, you know, sl- they can create their own canon, but it was it was I enjoyed the first one so much I really thought they were gonna step up their game and not give us a retread. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I would, I would D D minus. I'm actually going to go with a C, but I will agree with what John said. I thought the original, the the, the remake of Star Trek, yeah. a couple of years ago, was absolutely great. It's one of those ones that gets better every time you yep. watch it, because you notice it's more stuff. A lot of fun. I was underwhelmed in the theater the first time I saw it, but then really getting into it, and I thought you did a great job with that. And my expectations were so high for this one that yeah, I mean perhaps uh, I you know I I put it too high, but I'm really disappointed. And uh, yeah, so that's a C. Um, Pack Rim, Pacific Rim, the most recent one. Uh, Guillermo del Toro, the, the the fanboy's number one. Everybody loves Guillermo. I mean, you know, he did the second Blade movie, which uh, was one of the best of the bunch. Uh, he did Hellboy 1 and 2, personally, which I really, really enjoyed. Yeah. Pan's Labyrinth. Pan's Labyrinth. Chronos. Uh, yeah. Devil's Backbone actually coming out on Criterion soon. If you have not seen Devil's Backbone, uh, check it out. It's in- great. Interesting factoid from Comic-Con. Uh, del Toro has a, uh, directed a two-minute intro to The Simpsons for next year. Nice. Which yeah. is going to be interesting. They announced that at the same time as the Family Guy crossover and the Futurama crossover for next year. But anyway, Pack Rim, Jeremy. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Moving on, John. Now, ho- wait, hold on. <laughs> so, I know people have issues with it, and they're going to be like, you hated Man of Steel, but you love this. That movie felt like the closest thing to the movies that like I grew up with as True. a child. Yeah. But instead of being dudes in rubber suits, it was actual, like, sweet battles. I, I like the point that they act- they make a point to show you that they've evacuated the cities. Yep. And so, they're like, yeah, we're not I'm killing gorgeous. a bunch of civilians. And... I, it, my biggest issue with it is it felt like it was the third part of a trilogy where there's so much world building with like all of Charlie Day stuff and like this black market and whatever those nuns were. There's a religion built up around it. I wanted more. Of all the summer movies, it's the one that suffers from actually being too short. Yeah. yeah. You know, it could yeah. have easily, that's one they could have pushed an extra 20 to 30 minutes. You would have been fine with the pacing of it and you really could have built out the worlds of the, of the religion, yeah. of the guys that sell all the, you know, of, uh, Chow's uh, world yeah, and all the black that other stuff. Stuff, the black market stuff, the kaiju yeah. black market. Yeah. I just I liked how it looked. I thought the pacing was good. Yeah. People are complaining about the story stuff in the middle and how stereotypical all the actors are. It's archetypes. I, I think mean, it's very basic. They're archetypes. supposed to be. Yeah, like, that's the point. No, that's that. This is where I, I you know I will turn around and agree with the other people. And I loved the Jaeger versus the kaiju. I thought that was some of the best cinematic boys' own fantastic fantasy you you ever want to see. The rest of the film did not feel like a Del Toro film because Del Toro creates some really good characters. And when you have character actors like Idris Elba and um, Ron Perlman, who Ron Perlman, I would watch read a phone book. And Hannibal Chow was just almost like a phone in, cop out, tossing character that you know was barely there, here today, gulped tomorrow. Spoilers. Um, and then, you know, Idris Elba, I subscribe, I do agree with you on one thing. 
this fe feels like three movies crammed into one what they should have done was the first pack rim the, the kaijus come in t treat it like godzilla it should have been like Godzilla. The kaiju's yeah. coming in. The four or five days to take down the first one. The 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 movie ends with the first battle, the first unveiling of the 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 Jaegers, You know where Idris Elba is, is in that, and you know that's the nuclear one. Well, that kind of. I mean, the prologue could have been its own movie. Like and it when they're been. explaining the world, like it was a uh, throw. It was a throwaway prologue of something that could have been really, really. Well, interesting I think the prologue they set up the world because they didn't want to have it. It felt like here's the what happened in the first two movies, but we never saw those movies. I still give it five dinosaurs out of five. Well, so. I'm gonna I'm gonna continue on with my second movie where I I figure that the second movie would have been you know the first time you have the you know the the just the high level kaiju's coming in battering the shit this half cocked idea of shutting down the the jaegers and building up the you know the walls because yeah apparently we don't have the time or money to build the jaegers but we can build 200 feet walls around every well that that was all because they knew continent. the government the government knew that the walls the jaegers didn't work and the walls weren't going to work but they had it's just like they were giving people something to do yeah. to waste um, their time I, yeah, and when they well, ran for president it was they, they ran on the unemployment or employment right. was the campaign like so. i said I, and, and then i think you know the end uh, the last movie you know should have been the final half hour but yeah i thought the characterizations were weak i thought the actors were wasted it didn't feel like a del toro film in any other way except the action pieces i mean i found myself twiddling my thumbs during the the the, the speech pieces and charlie day's a good actor burn gorman who was in torchwood yeah. and mm -hmm. was in uh you know batman last year yeah. you know he is a great character actor i thought those guys were interesting i would love to see they them explored hannibal chow i would love to have seen you know yeah. more way more about chow but that, and his, i his, think his, that's what's interesting is like they give you so much little and expect you to know so much right. because I, you know, I think we were talking about like when the when the Jaegers first like, not Jaeger, sorry, when the the kaiju, kaiju yeah. first like start mutating, going to like level four, right, and then Chow shows like that he would like try to tap into him, right, like was that when that happened? happened like right. did he tell them enough about humanity right. that they were able to like yeah. move on? Like I, I just want. The thing is, I left that movie wanting to know more about the world. I wanted to see more, and that's the first movie like that I've seen this summer. Agreed. Uh, what I would say, though, is that what's nice about it being a single contained film is that it's the only movie this summer that feel, feels like a movie and not like a part of a franchise, something mm -hmm. that's giving you another chapter to say, and come back next year when you can spend more money on something. They, 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 could, they could have done that initial first movie and just, you know, it could have been a standalone first movie where you have the, the, the first the first Jaeger going up against, all the Jaegers going up against the Kaiju, and that would have been a, a nice wrapped up first movie as opposed to fast forward it was almost like sure. it's also like watching a season of netflix where all right i've watched 20 minutes of the first episode i'm going straight to the season well, finale and here's something in the in the, now in the in the little uh, prelude part of it it's like they talk about how these guys become rock stars blah 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 none of that is shown th in the rest of the movie you know yeah. it's like none of none of that is played right. into so they easily could have just done the first kaiju attack cut to 15 years later or however long it's been and you now have another that you know another kaiju attacking, and the Jaegers come in. You're like, okay, this has been their solution. I mean, there's there are there were ways around the way they introduced it. Again, I you know I think it's a fa it's a fantastic world. It was beautifully built. It was just it was broad strokes. Uh, it's the it's the one movie that I, I like because it is just a movie. It does make me feel like there's going to be a sequel, even though they're already quasi announcing one. Uh, it you know it's self contained. I appreciate that. If they'd made it three hours, it probably would have done better. All right, so grading. Let's grade it, Jeremy. Five dinosaurs out of five. Five dinosaurs. Um, I'd go for four dinosaurs, maybe three and a half. Is the character stuff and uh, that uh, and the relationship, especially between uh, Rinko Kikuchi and uh, Charlie Hunnan. Hunnan. I will go for uh, seven kaiju's out of ten. Mm. Uh, all right, final movie, and this is going to be very, very short and sharp. Iron Man three. Um, go. Somebody before I really lay into this guy, I'm gonna rip this film. Apart. I know. Uh, so I I don't know. I feel like I need to see it again. I don't know if it was because I was just in like a rainy two weeks in Europe, but I just wanted to see American. You were high on food. I was. I was. I was high on Hamon. Yeah. yeah in that case, um, yeah. You, you, so you be quiet. And I really no. I liked weeks. it. I I liked. I like. I thought it was fun. It felt like another Iron Man movie. It's just the the some of the issues that. We, you know, yeah. what that didn't Pacific Rim didn't have is that all the Marvel stuff now just feels like it's part of a bigger Real world. world yeah. So they're not finishing stories. They're yeah. just leaving a lot of stuff hanging. I know one of Marcus's issues is like extremist was underused, but was it? 
Like, or is that going to come back in Avengers? Like, I don't know. They just don't. They're not finishing these storylines. It feels like there's these one shots that yep. are like, and then go watch Thor, yep. and then go watch Captain America, which is obviously what they're doing. But I mean, with Thor and with Captain America and Iron Man One, I mean, they and Iron Man One was obviously the grand experiment right. to see if they could get this whole ball rolling. But they felt like self control self contained movies right. that you know, yeah, we know there's going to be sequels. But they are self-contained entities. Right. Iron Man 2, the best version of Iron Man 2 that I saw was one that was edited down for FX. And they cut like two-thirds almost of um, Mickey, Mickey, Mickey yeah. Roth's stuff out. And it became an excellent movie. Yep. <laughs> um, but then Iron Man 3 and, you know, Extremis, one of my favorite, favorite books. Um, just because it was written by Warren Ellis. Uh, look, I just love I just love the idea of extre yeah. Extremis, Extremis, however you pronounce it over here. Um I thought that was monumentally wasted. Um, but like I said, was it wasted? Or is he gonna? Is he gonna take that tech? Well, because by what? the end of the movie, he figured out the tech, and now is that gonna be? Yeah, but in if, Avengers he's, if 2, he was gonna take that tech, why would he go and why would he go under the knife to get his heart fixed when he could use Extremis to re reboot his body? Oh, and that's the whole beauty of, right. of you know if you read the Extremis books, he he is beaten to a pulp by somebody and he uses it, he reprograms it to become this new Iron right. Man, and then you know that creates a whole new world of problems. Right. And I feel that there was an wasn't enough there of Iron Man and you summed this up actually before we started talking John and I uh, before that we recorded John and I were discussing this and he said that you know did I feel that Shane Black had written a movie for Robert Downey Jr. and that's what summed it up he didn't write for Tony Stark he didn't write for Iron Man he wrote for Robert Downey Jr. his buddy he wrote something that in the last half an hour was Lethal Weapon 5 meets Kiss Kiss Bang Bang 2, which was not Iron Man. I don't really want to... I know Pepper Potts does get into a, uh, into a, a, a you know, uh, an outfit in the comic books, and she does, you know, she, she is used in, you know, in some of the stuff, especially the rebooted stuff. Don't have too much of a problem with that, but when you've got Rhodey and, and Tony Stark running, you know, crouching behind barrels, shooting guns, like Danny Glover and Mel Gibson circa 1985... Uh, and he's like, I'm calling in the suits, I'm calling the suits. All right, is he getting into the suit? Well, he's getting into the suits, then he's jumping out of the suits, and the suits are going over here. I wanted to see Iron Man. That's what I, that was what I went to see, not fucking Lethal Weapon 5. Well, so here's the question, right? All those suits that are running by themselves now, which one of those becomes Ultron? Oh, well, the place. I probably, mean, right? Like, that's where we're. I have a new... feeling like that's where we're going to go. If we don't have Hank Pym, the like. Mark 63. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. that's where we're going to get Ultron from. Right. Is... Yeah. I mean, it's going to be Tony Stark retires, and this is his gift, is the, the self powered Iron Man no, unit right. or whatever. But I, I don't want to get into that. I mean, I do agree with you, Jeremy, that there's, a, you know, we know we're in the bigger universe, and it feels like so much is being left. But in the first few movies, it was the, everything that was going to be touched on was always that post. Uh, credits right. section right. that was the teaser and that was the beauty so it was it was self-contained and i think Iron in a Man... post avengers world yeah. everything is going to be tied in together though like more where you have to have seen but this the earlier even, stuff this didn't even let's talk about the mandarin i mean this post avengers world where we <laughs> post thor world where we have thor and as an asgardian god and we have all these aliens coming yep. and everything and it's post avengers and we've got the mandarin who you know in the tra trailers could be this really cool character has he been around for hundreds of years thousands of years because it could well have been that and it turns out now all right love i'm a bit of an alcoholic actor i was on the bbc once and i'm giving up halfway through the movie and now they're going to arrest me all right <clears throat> i'm sorry for that alone shane black should be friggin ashamed and so should everybody else it's it literally seemed like Robert Downey Jr. and Shane Black were pissing around with it. It didn't well, feel. Remember, as Shane good. Black didn't write this though. Shane he, Black, he rewrote. He rewrote, he rewrote but it. he didn't write the story. I'm just saying, yeah, like sure. he wasn't the one that yeah, picked, he the, wasn't the one that picked those moments. As the director, yeah. the director has a lot of say with regards to the script, but and not the, a lot of say in turn to the universe. You got to take your got what I keep Fig saying is, is the one in charge. Like, Feig is the one in charge. Right, Marvel Kevin is Feig. in charge. I look, I, I, like I said, that last half hour felt like a Shane Black film from 1985. And I don't think you can disagree with me. Oh, I know, but like I, love I said, Shane it was Black Danny Glover, and it was it was uh, it was Mel Gibson. But this time round, it was Robert Downey Jr. and uh, yeah, Rhodey. I agree. And yeah, I just was very disappointed. So I'm gonna give Iron Man a Z for zilch. Yeah, zero zada. Yeah, I still love you, Sir Ben Kingsley. I think you're awesome. Call me. 
Ben Kingsley would have been would have been great as the Mandarin all the way through. And as for Guy Pearce, um, do dude, you he, know what kind of trouble you're in? No, sorry. Yeah, anybody who's seen the uh, Australian sitcom Neighbours, dude, you should probably go back to it after that. Wow. All right. Let the grades. Uh, you know, I'd like to actually. I mean, I you I have I, I would have liked to have seen Pepper Potts not get fixed and have her actually come back as a bad guy in a later episode, just because I would have right. dug going crazy off canon. Uh, but I'm still going to give it about a B minus. Yeah, I was going to say like a B B minus. There was issues, but after uh, after Iron Man two, it yeah, felt like you can only go up. You could only go up. So but they didn't. Uh, oh, they went down. oh, I don't know about they that. They went down, and that's so why we that, have this show. Oh, one second, though. One second, though. Now, here, now, here's a question. If, okay, let's let's do, not as an Iron Man film, but as a Shane Black film. How did you feel about it? If you just erase Iron Man from your skull and pretend that it's not, since in your mind, in any ways, it isn't. Uh, it felt like I mean, it didn't. I didn't enjoy it as much as I enjoyed Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which okay. is one of my favorite movies. I thought the the chemistry there, where you had the, you know Val Kilmer and sure. you had. Robert Downey Jr. I mean, that was a great movie in my opinion. I came late to it. I right. only I didn't see it in the theater. And obviously, I liked you know the Lethal Weapon movies in the eighties and the early nineties before they they climbed up their own backside and got just got annoying. That would be three. But um, yeah, I just don't think th this wasn't the Iron Man I was expecting. And I feel that, that as a somebody who is perhaps too much of a hardcore fan of Extremis and the Mandarin, that they took too many key plot points. Stuck them in a blender and served them, you know, half baked. To be honest with you, um, could do better. So yes, I'm still waiting for Iron Man three. So if that's got Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. Come back and do Ro Iron Man three properly next time. It's all about the baggage you bring into the film, apparently. Yeah. yeah. All right. And on that note, uh, I fully expect our comment section to go bananas with people hating us for our views on everything. And me, bitch. I mean, I'm just like I love 2012 movie wise. I thought, you know. Avengers, one of my favorite films, that was fantastic. Cabin in the Woods, as I said. Lupo was fantastic. Um, it's just all the movies that have come out so far this year that I've been excited for have left me low, you know, left me disappointed. In fact, the only one I wasn't excited for when it was zero expectation, I was moder moderately amused or moderately entertained by was Will Wolsey, yeah. which Great. was still not as good as the book. Fa uh, Fast Furious 6? I didn't get to see Fast oh, Six. The wife, fun. the wife won't let me watch those Fast Fast Six. She thinks I'll go and drive on the 101 very fast. Ah. But this is LA and you won't get more, five, more than five miles an hour. All right. So if you like this show, if you want more of us three and a couple of other people like Brandon Jones and Megan Rue coming in and talking Doctor Who and talking uh, Marvel and Guardians of the Galaxy and DC and Game of Thrones, uh, we could talk about True Blood. I mean, that's the whole idea. No, we can't. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, that was no, for, that was for a chance. <laughs> we will talk about anything and everything we want to with regards to you know pop culture, cool fan stuff. I hate to use the word geek nerd, but you know it's that kind of thing. If you've got any interest in this show, watch it. Give us a comment. Let us know. Let our friends let let your friends know to watch it. And um, you know, hopefully, this will be back very shortly. Um, and it will probably be revised and evolved over the coming weeks and months. But there is a lot of cool stuff coming, uh, and it's a, it's fun to be, you know, especially after Comic-Con, there was a lot of cool stuff. We actually didn't even get the chance to do, we didn't do what it, but I But I do want to do one quick thing. First two people to tweet me. I've got two iPhone 4 or 4S covers. One is Captain America. One is Spider-Man. First two people tweet me at Hoff TV. Let me know which one you want. I you will have ship to it to CC, you. You have to CC me in nah, for approval. Maybe. Well, and you have to basically give Jeremy shit for his thoughts on Iron Man 3. Oh, that's crazy. The most creative abuse that, I mean, I mean, creative abuse, not just F bombs and C bombs and just, you know, creatively disagree with him and abuse him in an amusing way, and you will get that. And CC and I came around. John, you got a Twitter feed? Uh, I do. I do have a Twitter. I tweet. What is it? Uh, I'm actually, I'm at John Santo. Okay. Yeah, there that's you go. pretty simple, right? And uh, one last thing, we need a show name, so let us know what you think. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, show name, definitely. Because we keep arguing. Well, next time around, we'll talk about the stuff we bought, including, like, I just get, how cool is this? Joker from Killing Joke. I just have to throw this out there, because... I just love this. Show off, okay. show off little S and M buddy though. Yeah, I mean the little There's, gimp. Yeah. In the uh, little um, leather. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what coat of book you were thinking there, but I gotta say this is really cool. And of course, yeah. I was at you, that party once. You can't have Joker mm. without Harley Quinn. So these are my two purchases <laughs> from Comic Con, and cool. I love them. We gotta go. Bye. Bye.